Okay, good morning. We will call the meeting to order. And the first item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda, and we do have one addition. I move approval with the addition. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Carried. Citizens to be heard. We'll move on to the next item. Um, request to fill vacancy in treasurer's office, Lori Johnson. Good morning, Good Lori. Morning. Good morning. This shouldn't take too long. Shouldn't, hopefully. <laughs> um, I do have a vacancy in the treasurer's office, and um, it was a full-time position, and I moved my current part-time person into that position. So I'm requesting to backfill, per permission to backfill that part-time position that I had that was 60% treasurer, 20% social service, and 20% motor vehicle. So I'm just requesting approval, and we're hoping to get somebody on board by September 1st, so we can get them trained and ready for uh, the tax season. Move approval. Okay, motion and a second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. You got it, Lori. All right, thank you very much. Be almost a record. <laughs> Miss Porter, you are next. This is. <laughs> this is the agenda edition. Oh, no. Motion to this. Hey, there's a savings with this one. Okay, I got a resignation yesterday with for one of my social workers that works in our child protection, child welfare service unit. She's been with us for eight years. Um, she is actually going to be leaving and is going to start some in-home therapy work with the Village Family Service Center. So we still, still will get to work with her, but just in a little different capacity. But I am requesting to refill her position. Again, it will be a child protection, child welfare caseload. There is some revenue um, generated with this position. It all depends on the family served, whether they're on medical assistance and the different programs. So. There is some revenue associated with it. And you also want to backfill if it comes to that, right? Correct. We generally post internally, and if there's any social workers that want to move from unit to unit, then ultimately we will have one position to fill. So I'd request approval to backfill any okay. movement. Yeah, I'll move to approve since there's such a significant savings. There are $131, and every dollar counts right now. So I'll move to approve. I'll second it. Discussion. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah. Frank. Um, where could you explain a little bit more? Where is the cost? Say, I mean, not the cost savings, but the, where do we make money when the, uh, the the cost savings will be our employee of eight years, of course, is on step. No, I uh, no, not that. Eight. How do they make money? How do oh, okay. Uh, based on the caseload. So, for example, um, some of the families we serve, they're, most of them are coming in our mandated program areas. So, they're families where either maltreatment has been reported, and so we've done an assessment and we've determined a need for services. And if the children are on um, medical assistance, and if the family meets certain criteria, we can bill for our case management, and we get reimbursed through Medicaid for the work that we do with the family. So it's Medicaid reimbursement. So in other words, we don't have to pay for it anymore. Huh? <laughs> Medicaid, well, we don't pay into. <laughs> no, I realize what it is. We just get it out of another fund, but uh, it's not in our budget. It's not in our budget. Yeah. Yes, I realize that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, all in favor say aye. 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 You got it. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, how about paying the bills, gentlemen? And you have to approve. Second. Okay. Motion, motion by Kevin, second by Frank to pay the bills. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. We'll go to committee reports. John, we'll start with you today. Um, let's see. We had a highway tracking meeting last uh, week after our board meeting, and uh, we, uh, we're going to be meeting again today to uh, to uh, come up with some proposals that we'll be presenting until next uh, next time, probably. But uh, uh, talked about the uh, wheelage tax uh, is one thing. We'll be talking about that again, uh, and. Uh, other other projects, uh, maybe Kevin has more to report on that. Otherwise, last week was holiday, and uh, really had nothing else. Uh, to no other meetings. Well, I, I guess I can 
go next, and I'll just piggyback off of John's on the highway tracking meeting. I, um, we had, uh, we've been spending the last couple of meetings going over our five-year plan, and we had a couple of areas there where we, we thought that uh, work in a couple of areas were extending out too far into different years, and so uh, we asked Dave and Nathan to um, take a look at how we could redo that to get them closer together, those projects closer together. And that did mean moving one back, but the one that was that moved back was not as uh, significant at the time. So that'll, I think that's going to be ready and be coming for the board next week for approval. Um, then the other meeting that I had uh, uh, was this morning, and that was the um, Solid Waste Advisory Committee meeting, um, subcommittee meeting, where we're working with um, looking at the possibility of uh, negotiations with um, the four-member county. Um, and let me get the, uh, it's PLMSWA. Which is the, how do you, what is it, Brian? Come on. <laughs> the burner at Perm. Yeah, <laughs> here it is. Prairie Lakes Municipal Solid Waste Authority. Waste exchange proposal. So we're looking at uh, ways that would reduce the usage of our landfill, send some of our waste to their facility uh, to be incinerated, and then fines coming back to our landfill, which would overall expand the life of our landfill. And uh, we're looking at that as a good deal, so we're hoping that we can, we're trying to craft together what we would consider, uh, the SWAC committee would consider a reasonable offer to make um, to this group uh, to join in them in some fashion. And ultimately, of course, the, the recommendation will come here for us as a full board to um, either approve or not approve. And, and hopefully we'll approve it here and we can move on and, and um, become involved with that facility. At all? That's it. Frank? I had uh, no committee reports other than I went to Cromwell Township for a meeting last night and made this good discussion on uh, fire, con fire protection contracts and joint powers things and stuff like that. So. Uh, Oh, uh, good okay. meeting. I had no committees last week. Okay. On Tuesday, July 2nd, had more planning commission, general business, and then we forwarded to the city council um, for them to <coughs> okay amendments to industrial overlay and mixed use zones. And that's all I had. Um, well, I, I did have uh, also that go meeting ahead, John. this morning. I had that meeting this morning with uh, for solid waste. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next item is a sale of bonds, but we can't do that until 11, is that correct? Okay, we'll be in recess until about five minutes to 11. How about Brian? Are you going to get a report from Brian? Yes, thank you. We're not in recess. Brian, you're on. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Mr. I'm glad the vice chair is keeping me in line here. Take like 20 minutes. Right? <laughs> oh, no. Well, he's on the ball. He's not on the ball. Well, yeah, I, I attended the highway tracking meeting, too. I think things are moving along. There have been a lot of issues to discuss there, a lot of things to consider, and, and uh, does it, that committee is very interesting because it looks at our infrastructure. Uh, the other meeting that I think the year two commissioners are being a little modest in regards to the SWAC committee, they've really done a lot of work in regards to that. This is really an opportunity to get involved in that burner at Perm, and I know when I was over in Becker County, that uh, Clay County hosted a study of what are we going to do with our solid waste? Are we going to keep putting them in the ground and looking for alternatives? And here is an alternative that is at our doorstep that we can really take advantage of putting up to 11,000 tons of garbage uh, uh, less in the ground each year. And plus, it saves us on some, we buy cover to put over our solid waste out there so it doesn't blow around every day. And, and we'll be taking the fines in, and so it's a it's a it's a really a huge step, I think. I, and uh, they realize that it has come to the board. They and they talked about that this morning that they're working on behalf of the full board, and we'll come back and keep you guys informed as to 
you know, some of the semantics of working out is transportation, though, back and forth. Transportation costs are expensive, but putting garbage in the ground is expensive, and you look at the environment in the long run. This is really a big step for Clay County, I think, and, and uh, really have done some good work on it. So, um, uh, had some valuations again, as that's pretty much going ongoing with the, the number that we have. Um, did again some follow up work on the budgets from the other agencies that that uh, you appropriate funds for and, and pass through on to them. Um, we had a diversion meeting, administrative meeting yesterday, and there's been a lot of discussion. You've read it in the news and things, or more had uh, a role in that, and I think they had made some positive moves last night. I uh, had a call from Mike Redlinger this morning and talked about that a little bit, so some positive things moving there in regards to it, too. Uh, the county fair is this week, and it's their 100th anniversary this year, and I know Shannon uh, has been uh, working on coordinating um, some booths. Government night has been changed, or the hours have been changed a little bit. So it's 4 to 8 o'clock Thursday night. So um, we'll have, we have about six departments at least that have signed up to, to work out there. I plan to be out there. It's Thursday night, so we have the diversion thing first. But uh, I plan to get out there between 6 and 8 to, for the booth as well. Um, this morning, I did have an email when I we got done with the, the SWAC committee. If you remember, I think it was two weeks ago, um, you were informed that that our county assessor had gone through the fees and the number that had been reviewed, and, and uh, before she sent out a letter, you guys received that information. Well, this morning, I, I did receive a, a, a email from Dilworth uh, inquiring as to the large amount of increase. They've had a lot of growth over the last, you know, 10, 12 years, and, and they see a hefty increase in that fee. So um, I haven't gotten back to uh, Ken Parks or county or the city administrator contacted me in regards to that. So he had talked to Nancy, and I guess I expected some feedback on, on those things. So, uh, and I talked we'll to Nancy with... that this morning. I got contact with last, last night, and oh, you are, I've already to... talked to Nancy. Okay. And... I mean, okay. she's got the figures there where it's gonna, it's gonna affect Dilworth. So because yeah. they grew, I mean, yeah. growth, growth uh, is gonna cost them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So just so aware that you know, in case you get some more feedback in regards to it. So, um, with that, Mr. Chair, that's about it. <coughs> I wanted to make additional comments on the the solid waste thing. Seems so like you started on the, uh, I don't know, was it three or four years ago? We had we had put together an invitation and Clay County actually hosted it where yeah. we had Cass County, the city of Fargo, we even had Grand Forks, yep, city of Grand, Grand Forks yeah. and many other counties uh, <laughs> trying to come to the table to, to see if we'd come up with a large scale um, way to um, put less garbage in the ground and the good news that came out of this is that there were four counties in Minnesota that did pursue and and um, and did something about it, um, and um, now I think it's it's a good opportunity for knowing that this is probably our only option here. Mm -hmm. You know, in the next 25 years, anyway, that that we move forward with um, trying to become part of that group. It's uh, when you when you listen to the MPCA. And, you know the per the permitting for landfills is getting more and more difficult. As a matter of fact, I don't I think if you look at the history, there's been no new landfills permitted in the state of Minnesota in a significant years. number of yeah. years, 20 to 30 years. You know, so and and, and even even though we did uh, um, buy some additional land and made room for expansion, even the expansion of landfills. Is getting to be more and more difficult to to do. So, uh, for us to be able to take a significant part of our waste and move it to another form that gets rid of it, as opposed to putting it in the ground, is a really good thing. And um, it's 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 too bad that, um, especially from the major markets with Fargo Moorhead, that we couldn't have come up with something. Uh, here that that would have done that for for both communities, but uh, Fargo seems content on on what they have for a number of years, and I don't quite frankly I don't think they have the 
uh, as stringent of, of guidelines for landfills in the state of North Dakota right now that, that Minnesota has. So, yeah. Which may come back to haunt them. Well, it, it, it may, it, it certainly may. I, I'm just saying that, that that's, yeah. that's kind of factual. <laughs> yeah. so. uh, Wayne, I, I've got uh, also a comment about the fair. Uh, it is the 100th year of the uh, Clay County Fair in Barnesville, and uh, they have on, on Saturday night, they have the grandstand thing, which they have invited all of you to, and I hope that that some of you can come there. I don't want to be the only commissioner representing the, yeah. the county board there. But I, I do have a family commitment I cannot get out of. I'll be there. I plan to be there. Good, okay. It's, uh, it should be a, f a fun evening, and uh, they're uh, inviting the other polit political leaders as well, so it's not just the commissioners there, but... Uh, and it uh, should be a good good evening. And it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, the, well, the weather sounds pretty good. There may be some, some rain in the in the process, which there always is, but uh, it doesn't sound like it's going to be unbearably hot. It's going to cool off in the evenings at least. So we hope for a good good fair run, and, uh, and uh, we look forward to, to seeing you all there. So. Boy, Mr. Chair. I, I do have one more thing, and I, I followed up with an email to you folks, but last board meeting, uh, there was an inquiry into the health care under the National Health Care Program. And, and uh, um, Jennifer Pearson, uh, works with uh, Darren in HR, uh, has really been on top of this stuff and doing some research on it. And, and uh, she had sent me the, the, the county jail and the Affordable Care Act. And there may be some opportunities for less increases, as I call it, because uh, we may be able to get those uh, individuals qualified while they're maybe in, in the jails and with the new stipulation uh, possibly when they're, if they have to be hospitalized, they might then fall out of that exemption where the federal government says that we cannot uh, pay uh, with, with government funds for health care for um, the, uh, under Medicaid for prisoners, which Really, when you when you think about it, it doesn't make a lot of sense that the Medicare is a federal health program, but yet you cannot use any of those funds for uh, the medical care of prisoners, and then it falls back on the local taxpayer. So it's still being paid for by public funds. So I think it must have been something that made some sense or made it sound good to the federal government that they were not going to pay for for prisoners, no, makes the local pays for prisoners when they're in custody. So there, there's some positive things here that might happen with prisoners and the costs. Uh, I wouldn't look for a big savings on it, but uh, it, it's, it was a good point to bring up. We'll keep, stay on top of it. Frank, one well, more question the fair. Are we involved in the fair somehow? Are we supposed to be, do we have a booth there? Or? We have this one evening now. It used to be that we did it on Friday afternoon, and it really was not a good time because there's, there's not a lot of traffic flow Friday right. afternoon. Mm -hmm. But now they've moved it to Thursday evening, which should be a lot better. And they have sit with, it's voluntary for the for our departments. But I think you said six now this year are going to be uh, there. At least six. And they have booths involved. that people can come by and. and That's on Thursday night. Huh? Thursday night mm -hmm. from four to eight. Yeah. Oh. But otherwise, we the only involvement we have otherwise as a county board is that we allocate uh, some funds every year to the county. But it's a separate organization that runs the. Yeah, they have a, I didn't know whether we had a, a booth there that. The commissioners there the whole time or whatever. No, it's other departments, but we can hang around there, and that's uh, helpful sometimes for them. To okay. We'll be in recess for about seven or eight minutes. We'll call the meeting back to order, and the next item is the sale of $2 million in general obligation bonds for uh, the Buffalo Red Watershed District, Shelley Eldridge from Ellers. Um, Bruce Albright and Lori Johnson, would you like to come up here? Okay. Bye. Good news and bad news. Mm -hmm. The bad news is 
you look at the last page of the handout, it's the picture of the rates, what's been going on in the market. And it's been hopping. It was really, really high the week before last, and it was giving me um, pains in my neck and stomach and other places. Um, I was kind of concerned. Um, but we did run some updated numbers uh, for Bruce after uh, he got the final bids and the final projects put together. And um, the good news is, is we came in very, very close to that, um, that last estimate that he had taken a look at. And um, I think that, that run, if I can find my notes here, that run we had uh, an estimate of um, 2.039% in our interim run of the of 618. Our um, original run that we uh, presented to the board, the TIC, was um, was not that. The original run was like about 50 basis points less than what we received today. So basically we're looking at right about where we estimated a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So and that was that was going to work with Bruce's numbers. Um, so I think we're I think we're good with that. Um, we did as we discussed receive a premium bid. And that premium bid was about $89,000. And then we also had about $4,700 uh, less in issuance costs. So there was about $92,000 available to either reduce the bond or put into project costs. Um, and I spoke with Bruce a little bit earlier this morning, and um, he's indicated that one of the projects can really use that extra revenue. And um, if you have questions on that, um, Bruce will be able to speak to that issue. Okay. Um, capitalized interest was a little bit higher, again, because the coupons were a little bit higher. Um, and again, the, the bond buyers index went way up and went, went down a little bit last week, but it was about 48 basis points higher than when we spoke about a month ago. And the, the bids reflect, reflect that uh, about half a percent difference. So the second page, or the, the third page, I'm sorry, um, shows who the bidders were. There were four bids. The winning bid came in at um, 2.0584%. And it was um, Baird out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And all these other folks are participating in the purchase of some of those bonds. Um, it's interesting to note that the first three bids are very, very close. They're within nine basis points of the winning bid. And then the last bid is kind of out there, um, a little bit higher. So I think, I think we've got a good bid for what the market is today. And um, the, next, the next pages then show the, show the details of the sources and uses. Charlie, is, can you tell me what the adjusted price means on the first page? Or on the page with the bids on, on the bottom? Oh, the adjusted price is um, the it is what the in, included with the premium bid, with the premium bid and the discount taken into account. But it's got a percentage at the end that's just a little bit right. less than what the it's, yeah. It's a, with with the premium, the TIC recalculated, adding the premium. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Is is two point zero six. Which is still under the under the other bids. Bruce, do you have anything to add at this time? Well, uh, what we did from a watershed perspective is we 
uh, went back and prepared, of course, the bond transcript, which Lori has a copy of. This is all of the documents that it, or not all of the documents, but most of the legal documents that it took to develop those eight projects from, uh, you know, the petitions which start them all the way through to, uh, hearing minutes, uh, appraisers reports, uh, and then last but not least, of course, the board's final order, which says we are going to build this a particular project. There are eight of them in the proposed bond sale, uh, and uh, they vary from the Georgetown levy to Crystal Creek to McCann's uh, Country Heritage Ditch. All of those numbers, except for Manston Slough, are fixed numbers. And what I did then, based on the two million projected $2 million bond sale, was took any access at that point and rolled it into our Manston Slough project. Um, we had a cost estimate for Manston Slough that uh, was dated approximately 2008. We have now opened bids for that project. They did come in higher than the engineer's estimate, which was $2.2 million. The uh, low bid was 2.4, so we have a couple hundred thousand dollar excess there. Also, with you know as well as I do uh, what land values have done, we've had to increase some of our easement payments to landowners out there to retain water on their property. The long and the short of all of that is Manston Slough has a, uh, in excess of a one million dollar shortfall. So using some of the local funds from the bond sale, if we can use this extra money from the premium bid, uh, I am working with um, the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. I understand Mr. Lacasmo is in Moorhead today and hope to talk to him before he goes back to the cities. I'm working with uh, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, the federal government. They're looking to put in some extra money to Manston Slough. I'm working with uh, the Minnesota Board of Water and Soil Resources have, who have told me verbally they will commit some extra funds. But we're trying to make up that shortfall. So the extra money we would just put into Manston Slough. Manston Slough has approximately $17 million worth of benefits. So we're okay in terms of if we put that extra money in there, how do we recoup it? Um, $15 million are watershed benefits uh, that are realized across the district. And approximately $1.8 million of it are localized benefits to be assessed against landowners. So. Uh, I feel we're, we're okay with the benefits there, but we were close on a project and say, well, all of a sudden this extra influx of cash, we don't have benefits, but Manston Slough we do. So I would propose, and in talking with Shelley earlier this morning, and that's totally up to you as commissioners, but if we take that premium bid and use that extra money, we can put it into the Manston Slough project. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Yes. Shelley, anything else you have for us at this time? If I could go back and address your question again. Okay. Um, we also did some reallocation of the pr of the principal payments because the original um, we ended up with not quite an equal uh, annual payment. So we've moved some of the principal payments around to make the annual payments more equal. And so included in that adjustment is. Um, included and that that's included in that um, footnote on the pricing and the the difference in the interest the total interest and the um, TIC also included the reallocation of principal amounts the additional uh, dollars that you're suggesting go to Manston Slough now all of these um, the way the that these bonds are going to be paid back is through assessments, right? Correction of assessments, and then and then Correct. they'll pay off the the bond debt. So the um, additional dollars that would go into Manston Slough, then that that would that would go towards this special assessment area for that project. There are two pots, Kevin, of local funding for the Manston Slough project. One is the watershed uh, district levy uh, through the 103D905 that we've come to you annually for mm -hmm. as district benefits. Um, the second pot of funds for Manston Slough would be a, a, quite a variety of local assessments to various ditch systems, to landowners that drain into the Manston Slough project. That's the 1.8 million direct local benefits. So 
that would come back through either watershed fees and or local assessments. That's how that extra money would be raised for the Manson Sloop project. But the, the, you're suggesting that the 89000 would go to the Manson Sloop project? Correct, sir. So, or, so that 89000 uh, of the two million, how much in here was Manson Slough? One point two three eight million. Okay, and so then we're adding eighty eighty nine thousand. Eighty nine two. So the those two numbers totaled will be specially assessed. You are correct, sir. Okay, that's that's what I'm trying to get. Okay. And that and that is is that determined to be a uh, when you said local benefits is that. Uh, there are some direct benefits to downstream landowners there because of the flood damage reduction aspects of the project. Mm -hmm. uh, there are also some localized benefits of having uh, the Manson Slough project. What happens, water will break out and go in a totally different direction into Wilkin County, which those people are assessed. And then we also assess the upstream landowners whose enhanced and increased drainage over time has created some of the problems there. Uh, they are paying part of those costs. Okay, so it, it goes through the viewer. viewer yeah, process. it went through the appraisal process. The hearing has been held, the order made, no appeals filed, and those benefits are in place, adopted, signed, sealed, and delivered. And just a, a quick moment to, you know, uh, a thank you from the watershed for Clay County doing this. It's a, the strength of Clay County. The bond rating came in with a double A rating for Clay County. It's a very strong county. That's reflected in the in the good bids that we've seen on behalf of the watershed and the taxpayers of the district, this truly helps us out because A, we get a lower interest rate than what we could borrow that money for to, at a lending institution. And secondly, it allows to, us to spread out those payments over the life of the bond sale, which means less of a direct hit on an annual basis in a much more concentrated or shorter period of time because the watershed is not bankers. John? Uh, and the 17 million in benefits for, for um, Manston Slough, is, are any of the benefits to Fargo-Moorhead included there? Indirectly they are through the watershed taxation because, you know, going back rough numbers, approximately half the money we collect um, does come right out of the, almost the city of Moorhead, 45% or whatever comes directly out of the city of Moorhead. So they help pay in those costs. Yeah, they're paying the costs, but as far as benefits that you... Do we, do Not we, directly assigned benefits, okay. John. I was wondering, retention projects as they as they come in place, uh, you know, can they use benefits to Fargo Moorhead for? Yeah. And I did fail to mention one of the places that I did ask for some extra funding yesterday, and, and I will be visiting further with it is um, the 25 million or the 24.5 million the city of Fargo has put up to the Red River Retention Authority, and I did have a conversation yesterday with Pat Downs, their executive director. So we're looking at that avenue too. Uh, we would like to get the complete funding package in place for Manston, and again, it's a whole variety of partners there, federal, state, local, that makes that happen, <coughs> and award that bid. We have until August 10th to award that to Gladen Construction. Gentlemen, anything else? I'm good. Gentlemen? Yeah, what is the resolution we need to? Resolution in your packet is prepared by your bond counsel, Dorsey and Whitney, and it's a resolution authorizing you issuance, awarding the sale, prescribing the form and details, and providing for the payment of two million general obligation watershed improvement bonds. Series 2013. I would move the resolution. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion, gentlemen. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion is carried. Again, yes. thank you very much, and we look forward to working with your auditor to make sure that we get all these proper assessments in place in accordance with all of these eight viewers' reports or appraisers' reports. And we at Ellers always appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Shelley. Nice Thank to you. have you with us today. You. First Lady. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Bruce. Anything else for the good of the order? We're adjourned.